Regrow farming. This is a concept used for where you enable a regrow balloon to keep on regrowing for pop purposes. So nowadays with paragons being a thing, so let's say if you want the Ascended Shadow, for example, then one of the main requirements is to accumulate 16.2 million pops. So that's 16.200 point zero 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 pops or sorry commas not dots <laughs> so regrow farms enabled it so that it's easy in order for you to get the pop requirement and then from there you would purchase your other things like let's say with this case you would get a bunch of zero two four sticky bombs in order to meet its criteria of both costs and tiers well unfortunately in update 38 Ninja Kiwi has removed any regrowers from accumulating to the pop count. So we are on resort just as a demonstration. We have here a 301 Druid of the Storm. And what this thing is going to do is test out a regrow. So it's doing most pops like it normally would, but then it stops getting pops because of the factor that this is now accumulating so many we'll put this on last by the way it's now doing so many pops that it's gone to a point where the system knows that all of these are regrows so therefore they are no longer worthy pops of being accumulated to a pop count so Look, we just started from one regrow ceramic. And now we have so many on the screen that the druid cannot control. 301 is usually the way to go for a druid. Just that little bit of extra range so that we can initially start the pops just a little bit sooner. And then you would have something like a zero, no, not edit that, a 032 glue gunner in order to slow down the regrows even further so that they are able to regrow even more. Just look at all this and it's going to work and there's so much going on that <laughs> you don't even see the tornadoes spawn out of the druid himself. So this used to be a strategy where you just sit there for one round and get so many pops that you get the 16.2 million pops required in order to meet one of the main criteria for a max level paragon so when it's solo that is level 76 or level 79 if you have the double crossbow master upgrade no not upgrade a monkey tree knowledge point so that gains the um the Dark Monkey from level 76 to level 79 if you have two crossbow masters on the field at any given point in time. Okay, so we're going to remove all that. I've made the point clear. So before update 38, you're able to get a huge amount of pops. Like this should be in the thousands and this should also be in the thousands. But nowadays, with one of the recent changes to update 38, we grow balloons no longer accumulate to the total amount. This is bad for Paragons, but if you're doing two Mega Pops, then this is actually a blessing because it doesn't calculate the regrow pops that you've done. So therefore, you cannot like try and guess what kind of pop count that you had without the regrows because you can't really fathom out exactly unless you go frame by frame for a recording session of if you have been able to go over that amount. So it's 2,042,000 or 2,046,000, I believe it is. It's like the default amount of balloons that spawn on a screen, unless you have something like a Zeely that leeches away pops because of her Moab Hex ability, enabling to only pop, the, let's say, the bad layer. And it doesn't count for the ZMGs and DDTs inside because the curse removes every other aspect. From the equation but it doesn't add to the total pop count but so this is bad for paragons because it means you're gonna have to find other ways in order to accumulate pops such as let's say favorite trades because 
you won't be able to generate money because that is also a means to accumulate to a pop count because it's either 16.2 million pops or it's a certain amount of money that I don't remember off the top of my head because both generation by the towers themselves for both pops and cash generates towards the same result you can have like an either or one or the other so when it comes to the Naval Arc of the Seas, I would say that that is the best Paragon to get when it comes to trying to get a Paragon as early as possible. Because you can put down a load of favor trades, you can put down a load of central market farms, and all of those favor trades in the trade empire would be all under a Monkey City's influence which will increase their money further in which they generate at the end of each round. Now, what else is there available at any given point in time? We have balloon traps and XXXL traps, and you're able to do both the Nave Arc of the Seas and the Master Builder simultaneously, because the XXXL trap and the balloon traps, they generate money from balloons themselves, whereas with the favor trades, they don't generate money from balloons, but they generate at the end of each round. So that's why I think at the moment, these two Paragons are the best ones in order to try and get them as early as possible. Because I believe that to get to 16.2 million pops throughout the game, you have to go like through mid hundred and the mid, mid hundreds at the very latest in order to actually get to a point it's like 130 something possibly where the total amount of pops accumulated would be 16.2 million pops but with money generation from the monkey buccaneers and their merchantmen's favorite trades and trade empire you're able to circumvent some of that regrow farming which you're no longer able to do because you're able to get the accumulation those power gone power levels through money generation with the bottom path of both the monkey buccaneer and the engineer monkey now what if let's say we're in a universe where every single tower now has a power gone well we have jungle's bounty but the issue with jungle's bounty is well druid druid of the jungle and therefore any balloon on screen unless it's a lead will be popped immediately because of its vine applications on the ground so you would pray that a lot of balloons would be camos and then hope that the camos don't get popped too quickly so that you can use the ability three times around because nowadays abilities have a certain amount of times in which you can use them before you are no longer able to use their abilities. They're literally called off. And if the round lasts for long enough so that the game thinks, yes, you're definitely doing a regrow farm, the round is going on for too long, then regardless of when you place the tower down, the game knows that you're trying to farm money by continuously placing down towers, using up their ability cap, setting them, place a fresh one down, do the same thing, sell that. You have to do all of the ability spamming at the start of a round before the game thinks that you are too late within the round in which the game knows that you are accumulating some kind of farm going on when it comes to the balloons. So you're either slowing them down to an absolute crawl. So let's say with a stronger, sorry, a sticky glue, stronger glue, non-lethal glue gunner so let's say a 032 which is a very good example because you're slowing down both the balloons and also they are slow down even more because of the fact that it lasts a lot longer and your stronger glue enables those balloons to be further slowed down you can also pair it with a balloon sabotage sorry balloon, sab <laughs> balloon sabotage sorry so that then they slow down even more so in some cases you don't want to pop balloons because you want the round to last as long as possible you want the balloons themselves to be camofied so that the druid of the jungle by default cannot target them and what other towers are there well we do have I don't think either lead to gold or rubber to gold accumulates towards money because of the fact that the alchemist doesn't have 
a money contribution counter. But then again, you also have things like the Pirate Lord, which accumulates pops and accumulates money, but the money accumulation is not indicated. So that's like a hidden count, hidden mechanic there. With snipers, this is really difficult because in order to generate money with snipers, they also can see camos because of night vision goggle. But also because of supply drop, then they can target lead balloons. So the only option there, if you don't want snipers to pop balloons, is for the balloons themselves to be frozen. But if you try and freeze them, then that is also damaging them. And when they're not frozen, then they can be popped by the sniper. So there are lots of scenarios where if you're going to try and do alternate money generation, like let's say with supply drops and elite sniper. Also, by the way, in update 38, a really good change is if you activate elite sniper, you're also activating all available supply drops at any given point in time. So that's brilliant. You just put a tech bot on the elite sniper and just wait for all of the planes to come in and hope your PC's RAM does not crash. So what other towers are there? Well, there are also support tunics and special population supply drops which can rain in. So I would say when it comes to a alternate timeline where every single tower now has a power gone, Focus on some Paragons, or some Tower, sorry, which has an alternate means of accumulating money so that you're not just reliant on a pop count in order to meet the level requirement in order to get a max level Paragon. So alongside getting 100 non-Tier 5 upgrades, 250k's worth of upgrades, 16.2 million pops and i think there's like one other factor that is in play it's like the number of towers that you place down as a bare minimum as well i think it's like 20 or 25 maybe someone in the comments section will know <laughs> like i know a few things about this game but i don't know everything about this game and that is just like such a joy about games like this it's a gigantic sandbox where you can do literally anything you want as long as the rules are in place. Like in Sandbox, you could do pretty much anything aside from summoning the Vengeful True Sun God and summoning Power Gods as well. Those are the only two things you cannot do. None of the primary towers has any alternate money means. You've got supply drops with snipers. You've got the favor trades with the buccaneers, which I would say is probably the best one. Because regardless of what pops you get, you always get a certain amount of money at the end of the round, which all accumulates towards the Paragon level. Um, air, so the uh, Monkey Aces, if they don't have anything. Uh, helicopters have the support tunics and special populations. Um, magic Monkeys don't have anything aside from the Druids. Uh, farms, obviously they would only ever be able to get money. If there was only a, if there was a banana farm power gone, that would be very interesting. Like, how much money would you generate from a banana farm power gone when you combine Banana Central, Monkeynomics, and Monkey Wall Street? God, that would be a huge amount. I can't imagine what Ninja Q would do with the idea of a banana farm power gone. Um, I think from Beast Handler, like that would be an incredibly interesting one. A Beast Handler Paragon, which somehow is able to have all three of these creatures at any given point in time. Like that would be incredibly interesting. Uh, obviously with the Engineer Monkeys, you have a Balloon Trap as an XXXL Trap as your means of being able to, um, generate an additional means of poppage but not through pops but through money but in order to get that money it's also by pop so you want the engineers to pop the balloons through their traps in order to generate money and that is your money generation from the balloons and paired alongside that you want the favorite trades and the trade empire in order to accumulate the money through end of round bonus 
So that's why within my Paragon videos that I do like, can you do X amount of Paragons on your own? You really want to prioritize Paragons, which has alternate money means of generation. You don't want to just try and do, let's say, a Bedart Paragon first, because with Geraldo and his Paragon Power Totems and the Monkey Knowledge Point that enables you to have Crossbow Master, you only need 40 rather than 45 Paragon Power Totems placed down. And for people who still think that you can just sell Geraldo and level him back up to level 20 in order to replenish his shop items, that has not been a thing since the first mini update after Geraldo was introduced. Ninja Kiwi saw that people were exploiting this manner and doesn't matter how much um, doesn't matter how much money you'll be able to generate you're able to generate enough money to level up Geraldo to level 20 and then place down the farms and um, sorry not place down the farms place down all the paragons rinse sell repeat rinse sell repeat rinse sell repeat with the paragon power totems until you run out of money that's not a possibility nowadays you can't just simply spam Geraldo down Level him up to 20. Put his Paragon Powder Totems down, sorry. Sell him and then place him down again if I can do so. And then let's say go back here. Go up to level 20. Because guess what? He has no Paragon Power Totems left. And it's been like that for a long time now. This is only addressing to people who still believe that you can get more Paragon Power Totems through selling and then repurchasing him and then re-leveling him up through monetary means it's not possible it's not been possible for a long time but that is kind of in a way a beauty because it's an achievement if you are able to get every single power gone up to level 100 on your own but i think it's going to get to a certain point where cooperation is key with other players so if you have three other teammates and you're able to put down lots of tier five so let's say with the dark monkey everyone has an ultra juggernaut everyone has a plasma monkey fan club everyone has two crossbow masters down with all of the tier fives and the power that they compute with the power gone itself it means that you don't need to put as many power gone power totems down at all like you could have four Geraldos on the field and therefore you'd be able to get to that pot requirement even quicker because of the fact that you have so you but that level down even quicker because you have nine excess tier fives which are contributing towards the power gone power level so therefore you wouldn't need to place as many power gone power totems in order to accumulate enough power for a degree level 100 so i hope this if so I hope this video has been informative in some ways i know that it's been a bit mish and mash with the dialogue in here and there but this is non-scripted and i kind of like non-scripted videos because it feels more natural than just reading off a crib a sheet or a crib or something like that a script <laughs> crib i'm not having a baby right Thank you so much for watching. Hope this video has been informative in some ways. But update 38 has killed the means of regrowth farming for Paragons. But for two Mega Pops, it is a good sign because it means that you are able to accurately see how many original balloons you have popped. And the game does not count the regrown pops that you have done. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Please be sure to use my creator code if you are ever purchasing something from the store itself. So flare balloons, all lower caps, and to buy yourself something that will help me, regardless of how little or large it is. Thank you so much for watching, and take care of yourselves, everyone.